This is going to be the 2020 Community Consciousness Fair in Stewart, Florida, and it is going to be located here at Terra Fermata. And I can't wait to let you listen to all the presenters, and uh, it's ought to be fun. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Hi, today we're having a presentation by the Healing House, and Dr. Candace McCoy is the facilitator. She's going to be presenting all our speakers, and we shall listen to what they have to say. We're going to have a presentation by Alyssa Kiefer from CoLab Farms, which is a local urban farm here in Stewart, and they have other locations, and they are opening a farm market just a block over from here in about two months. So she's going to give us a nice presentation. I work for a local farm called Colab Farm. We actually have a location right behind, across the street over here, where the old ground floor farm location used to be. We are providing you guys with clean, locally grown produce, as well as event spaces, education, and we'll have a market and restaurant open in the early spring. Oh, wonderful! Um, so I am here today to do a fun little workshop with you guys. I'm going to do some demonstration. We're doing a grow your own make and take garden today. So basically all those little garden or kitchen scraps, little things that you tend to throw away and not use, we're transforming them into other veggies that you can use and feed your families. Um, everything that you see once I'm finished, if you'd like to come up and help yourselves, you can definitely take one home with you today. Okay, so I'm gonna get started and show you guys a couple fun things. Hear me while I do this? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I'm sure everybody is pretty familiar with pineapple tops. Has everybody here either tried or started how to grow their own pineapple tops at home? No, I have a few people saying no. Okay, so in Florida, we all know that it used to be one of the pineapple capitals of the world, and we all love our pineapples down here. But if you want, there's a little nifty trick that you can do with your pineapples to grow a second pineapple. So I've got a few, a few examples up here if you want to come up afterwards to look. But the basics of this is, is you cut the top of the pineapple off just like you would when you are cutting the pineapple to eat it. My hands. Normally I don't have a problem with being loud, but today I do have a problem with being loud. Okay, can everybody hear me now? Is that better? So sorry about that, guys. So, if you didn't know, fun little trick that you can do with pineapples. You take the top off just like you would any other pineapple that you were going to eat at home. Voila. You cut off the part where you have the flesh that you would eat till you get right down to the stem of the pineapple top. Once you have just the pineapple, you do one little quick slice to make it flat. And then you peel leaves off down in a downward motion until you have about two inches of pineapple stem that you can place into water. So you don't want the actual leaves themselves to be put into the water because they tend to rot and you don't want that. You want the plant to root, not to rot. So what you're going to do is you peel it off till you get about two or three inches depending on how big the pineapple top is. You take a fun little vase that you have around, or in this case I've got some paper cups for you folks, 
and you put it in water. This pineapple top was cut last Sunday and has been in water for seven days and it's now got little roots sprouting up on it. I would say I would leave this guy in there for another two, another week, so about two weeks, and you could put it in soil. After that, you put it in soil and it does take a while. So you can grow it in a pot takes anywhere from six months to eight months and then you can get a little baby pineapple that comes up on top that regrows for you. They're super sweet, they're really good and they're definitely a fun little experiment that you can do with the kids or the grandkids just to show them that you can regrow things from your scraps instead of just throwing them away. Okay, so another typical one for people that they use a lot of is garlic and onions, right? We all have garlic and onions at home. So today I've got a couple green onions here that I have for examples. So with green onions or scallions, very similar, both, you, you usually cut the bottom ends where the roots are off and then you use the rest throughout the tops, correct? Well, what you do is you just take your little bottoms that you have, you leave a two inch, two inches from the bottom of where the roots are. You literally can put them in a little cup of water, whether it be paper or plastic or whatever you have around. Today I have some I literally used some old candle holders that I had sitting around. You take them out, you put the onions in the holders, you fill just until the bottom of the roots is covered, and about five days you get sprouts. So as you can see, there's seven days of growth here, and we have about three inches that regrow here. I usually give them two weeks and then I put them in soil, and you can cut and snip as you go, or you can harvest when they reach this length or longer. So you can pull the whole onion out and re-eat it if you would like, or you can just do snips off the top as you need it for your potatoes or your salad or whatever you want to put it on. Another fun thing that a lot of people don't realize, who here uses garlic every day? Who always has that little tiny piece of random garlic that sits in the bowl from the bulb that never gets used? And you always either throw it away or put it in the compost or whatever. Well, Take that little random piece of garlic that you forgot in the bottom of the fridge, and all you need to do is find the blunt end side, leave the peel on it, do not peel the garlic, and place the bottom in water. After about seven days, you get giant roots on this bulb of garlic, and you get a little green sprout. The little green spots are completely edible, and then after a few months, you can pull and harvest the garlic. Now there is a little kicker with garlic in Florida. Garlic does not like heat. Garlic will not properly bulb without a certain amount of freeze time, fun fact. So when you regrow the garlic from your kitchen in Florida, you get the garlic tops, which taste just like garlic, and you get a little miniature bulb once it's all said and done and grown. So it won't fully bulb out, but it's a fun little experiment you can do with your kids to show them that hey, this is where your garlic comes from. Because a lot of kids don't know that when you get garlic from the store, it comes in a giant bulb that comes, that, oh, it's flying out of it, that come off into little pieces. And it's just a really good way to show your kids where their food comes from. And I think my last but not least fun little demonstration that I have for you guys is sweet potato. Anybody love sweet potato? Yes. <laughs> Okay, so I'm, one, I'm guilty of this. I tend to buy one of those big five pound bags of sweet potatoes. And then I always have that one random sweet potato that sits under my cupboard and sprouts. And I'm like, what the heck am I gonna do with this sweet potato? Well, sweet potatoes are really great because you can regrow them from your kitchen. So if you have a sweet potato that's sprouting, that is great. It's a little jump start for you. If you don't, it's not a worry. So you take your leftover sweet potato that you have sitting in your cupboard and you could do it one of two ways. If you are looking to have an experiment and just have a few potato slips that you're not really interested in growing into more potatoes, I would say use the full potato because you're going to get the best roots and the best slips if you use the full potato. But if you're looking to plant an entire garden of sweet potatoes so that you can provide your family with sweet potatoes for the season, you can do few different methods, but this is one of my favorites. So, typically with a sweet potato, the pointy end goes up and the blunt end goes down, but we're gonna cheat a little bit today. We are going to, we're gonna cut the potato in half 
and we're going to put both ends in. Now, typically, when you do it this way, it'll allow you to produce double the amount of sweet potato slips that you want in a short amount of time. It takes two to four weeks to get plants that are about four inches tall, and as soon as they have three sets of leaves on them, you can plant them in the ground. You just snap them off the main root, and there they go, into the garden. So you take this guy, and you would... Yeah! Somebody want to come help me plant some stuff? I got pineapples that need planted. I've got onions that need planted. You want to come do them? Okay. So, which one do you want to do? We've got a leek here that can be planted. Onions, garlic. What are you feeling? The onions. Okay, there you go. So, all you have to do with these guys... Go ahead and fill up your cup with dirt. You can kind of see how high I filled it up there. A little bit more. Okay. okay. Now I've got a nifty little tool so your hands don't get dirty. Take that. You're going to make a little hole in the center there. Yeah, just that's a little wider. You're going to pick out your favorite onion that you like there. That's the tallest one. Go for it. Yep. You're going to stick it in roots down. You want to make sure that the root ball is completely covered with soil, so that's good. And once you're done, you're going to take your little tool and you're just going to fill in the soil so that it's more compact and not flopping around in the cup. Perfect. And then you just do a little press around the center so that it doesn't move. And there's your onion. You put that guy in the windowsill and he will continue to grow until he gets about six to eight inches long. And then that's when you can harvest them or you can just trim the tops. And you can take, you want to take that with you? There you go, you got yourself a little onion. Thank you. Clap for my demonstration helper. <laughs> okay. Come here. You wanted this pineapple pop so bad, you can come show me if you can plant it. I got faith in you. Okay. So, you listen to what she did, correct? I'm going to give you your cup. There you go. That guy is yours. So, you're going to fill it up with soil. And you can depend, it depends on how long you want to wait. A lot of people, I, I think they're really pretty in my window, so I leave them in my kitchen sill. But the amount of roots all depends on your preference. Typically, you want to have at least an inch or two of roots. I've seen them get as much as six or eight inches. It just depends on how long you leave it there. When you do have them in the windowsill, remember to change the water that they are in every two days. Because if they're not in soil yet, they're still growing from the water, they need to have that freshness of nutrients. Okay, okay. So take your little guy and make a little hole in the center. Around in there. Nice. Okay. So, yeah, we're going to put that in and I'm going to help you here. We're going to surround the rest of it with soil. With the pineapple tops, you want to make sure that you're covering the entire bottom where the root system is and a few inches up the thing. You want to be able to have it really produce big, healthy, full roots, and that happens when it's surrounded by soil. So for watering, once they're in soil, I usually always tell people to do the finger test. Um, so the basic way for watering with these guys, since they are going to be in your window, so you don't have to water them as much. Um, the ones that are in soil, I typically say go ahead and give it a touch. Once you first, once you first plant it, you give it a good watering. After that, you stick your finger in a quarter to a half way. If it's still pretty wet, leave it. You want it to kind of dry out for the most part because if you keep overwatering it every single day, it will die. So you don't want it to have wet feet. Remember that. Plants don't like wet feet especially not the little ones that we grow in our kitchen, okay? So just give it the little finger test. You put it in there. If it's too wet, if you feel a little bit of moisture, wait a day or two and then rewater. Typically with stuff that's in the kitchen, especially if it's growing out of the windowsill, I only water it once every three days. I tell you, I kill plants. They, I do. I water them too much, but I love them. I try. Um, so what we're going to do now, I want everybody to do, if you want to, I really would like everybody to take something home today. So if you'd like to come up and make something or, um, or you can take one, a sample home. So um, uh, do you have anything else you want to add? Okay.
Do you have your contact number? I do. I've got cards. I've got stock cards. If you've got any other questions on watering or how to keep some of the plants that you have at home already alive, come on up and let me know. Yeah, so please take a moment and come on up um, and get if we, we have enough, so I, I really want everybody to take at least one home. That's the goal is to start your own garden, start your own um, pineapple. We have garlic, green onion. And they're all labeled, so feel, please feel free. That, that one is a week. I do, oh, garlic. I do also have some tomato starts up here, too. It, you just save the butts of the tomatoes that you cut off on each end, and they typically have some seeds in them. You throw them in some soil, and they will sprout in two weeks. Yes. So these are tomato sprouts. These are right over here. Those are the tomato sprouts. Yes. Yeah. And these are all the tomato sprouts. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, there is definitely any information you can find here today on YouTube, or you can take our cards, and we're always available to answer any questions that you guys might have. Yeah, and we're also always at the Sunday Stewart Green Market, so if you ever need any veggies, or you've got any questions about your plants, or you want to do a workshop, you can come see us here. Yeah, please. We're going to have a presentation from Michelle from Down to Earth Yoga. And we're going to see a little demonstration. I'm going to go over a couple things that are super beneficial to do at home if you're just kind of starting your yoga practice or you've never done yoga before. Um, instead of, you know, looking it up online and... and being overwhelmed with all sorts of things. Just kind of look inward and, and we're just gonna show you a few things to do today. Um, so we're gonna go over a couple breathing techniques. So if, what's your name? Hala is going to take a nice gentle seat. So she's gonna sit down, um, just taking the legs into a nice cross-legged position. If the hips are not allowing you to open the knees this wide, feel free to take pillows or if you have blocks or um, I say pillows always work best, but blocks or pillows underneath of the outer part of the leg. So if the knees just allow them to fall open, and go ahead and feel free to take your hands either down to the knees and sit up really tall. So just kind of settling in, sitting up really tall, and just naturally feeling the how the spine is sitting. So crown of the head stacking over the shoulders, stacking underneath of the hips, and then the sits bones just grounding down. Um, taking the eyes closed, you know, your choice. I always think that taking eyes closed is just a little bit easier to kind of look inward and tap in and just settle into your space and your mat. Um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna show you guys a few um, just breathing techniques you can do to kind of settle down, really good for anxiety, uh, really good for just if you need to just take a couple minutes to slow down. Um, so alternated nostril breathing. So alternated nostril breathing, you're gonna just take one, you're gonna take your thumb and either the index, ring, or whatever other finger you want to take, and just take one um, hand to the nose. So you're gonna just switch off back and forth and as you breathe. So you're going to first take it just a nice clearing breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. And then she's gonna take her right hand to the right nostril. You guys can do this too as you're sitting down at work, whenever driving and for all of our road ragers out there um so you're going to take your right thumb you're going to take a big inhale through the nose so your left nostril is going to inhale hold at the top you're going to exhale out of that nostril and then you're going to start from there so inhale hold you're going to close off the nostril that you just were breathing into your left one and then breathe out of the right one so breathing out of the right nostril and breathing back in. So just kind of switching. Everyone's breaths are really um, different. We're all, our breath is unique. This is your healing sound of breath. This is an oceanic healing sound. This is going to give you your calmness. So as you're switching back and forth, really just being mindful of as you inhale, holding at the top of that inhale, wait and pause. So much growth happens at the pause of the breath. As you exhale completely, just really pausing at the bottom of the breath. So really noticing, you're going to notice in the nose, one side is usually, usually, a little bit more clogged than the other. You're going to notice some um, maybe interruptions in the breath or things like that. So just really alternating that nostril breathing. 
that's a really good way if you're nauseous, if you have headaches, if you have any type of um, anxiety or anything that your body, you're just like, I don't know what this is, or you just don't feel good, you know, like just start doing this nostril, nos, alternating nostril breathing. I taught a bunch of classes this morning. I apologize. I can't speak. But anyway, so this is a good way to just start and sit at home and breathe. Um, another option you can do is taking the palms either down to the knees. Um, the placement of your palms can be very, very important. If you are feeling really staticky and busy, placing the palms downward, this is going to keep your energy and your uh, self just in a little bit. If you're reading a more receiving end, fl uh, flipping the palms up. So if you're feeling really slow and sluggish or anything like that, just flipping the palms up, sitting up really tall and then closing the eyes. So we're going to start our Ujjayi Pranayama. You guys feel free to join in. Uh, this is your oceanic sound of breath. So it's an audible sound. You're going to be breathing the sound in and out of the nose. So you breathe in. It's almost opposite of how you breathe in your chest. You're going to start the breath from the belly. So starting the breath from the core down in the root. The belly, think of it like a balloon. You're going to expand the belly as you inhale through the nose. The belly is going to rise and fill. As you exhale, the belly is just going to soften and come back down to its natural state. So deepening this a little bit, start the breath from the belly. Inhale through the nose. Feel like the, that balloon is expanding and you're bringing the breath all the way into the tops of the lungs, the backs of your lungs. You're going to sit there and hold that breath for a moment. And as you exhale out of the nose, you constrict the throat just slightly. So that rushing oceanic breath comes out of the nostrils, almost like you're cycling it from the back of your throat through the eyes and out of the nose. So just cycling that breath out, you can even count your breaths. For me, counting the breath really helps. So inhaling for a count of one, two, three, whatever that breath is. You have a rhythm of three, five, seven, twelve, one day, whatever that rhythm is. If you're right at one right now and you're starting there, awesome. You have somewhere to go. So just keeping that breath in for a count of whatever it is and then exhaling the same amount out. So exhaling for a count of three, five, seven, whatever that is. This is your unique sound of breath and your unique rhythm of breath. So starting there just breathing. That alone, it's a lot of work. So be proud of yourself. If you take that home today and you just breathe, awesome. Do that. You made one step. Um, another thing you can do, coming, we're just going to come to a few little shoulder stretches. So she's going to take her right arm and she's, or both arms, reach both arms up to the sky. You can even take the hands up to the sky, maybe take um, a breath here. You're going to reach the right arm behind you, take the left arm to that right knee, and you can take the bottom hand, the right hand, down to the floor and just push into the floor and sit up super, super tall. So a little bit of um, leverage, if you will. You can push into that left hand onto that knee and just continue the twist as you see she can take her head all the way around or wherever you are that day. Just continue the twist as far as you can go. Keeping the left hand on the right knee, she's going to lift her right arm up and she's going to take the right arm over and across to the other knee and kind of bow the head. So grabbing each knee, tucking the chin to the chest and just round into that stretch. So pulling the belly in here. You have to tucking the head down and pulling everything in. This is really going to open up the shoulders. Um, if you have any tightness in the neck or low back, it feels really, really good. Um, so just bringing the arms back down by the sides. Inhale, the arms go right back up to the sky. And then just take the twist the other way. We cannot be uneven. So twisting the opposite direction, use that back hand to sit up super tall. Take the right hand to the opposite knee and just push into that knee slightly and give yourself a nice gentle twist. So you can do this in your office chair. You can do this at home. You can do this anywhere at the beach. And just allowing that twist to really happen. Naturally bring the back hand up and over, maybe pausing. You can pause at the top for the nice side stretch and then making your way back to the other knee, giving yourself that little shoulder stretch again. So this one is really good, simple. You can do it anywhere. Um, so just allowing the shoulders to open up. So coming down to, we're going to kind of move a little bit. For those of us who want a little bit more movement, things like that, um, we're going to start in a child's pose. So coming into a child's pose, please, our knees are going to be either together or apart. Everyone is a little bit different here. A lot of us don't have the mobility in the knees to even sit down on the heels like this, and that's fine. Take a pillow or a block and you can put the block underneath of your um, sit bones, just resting on the heels. So a little options if the knees are wonky like mine, this doesn't feel that good, um, take a pillow. So just walking the hands out, bringing the crown of the head down to the floor and just allowing everything to settle in. So this is really good to kind of reconnect to the breath, um, reconnect to yourself, really notice what's going on. This is a little bit of a... Um, 
hip, slight hip compression. And that slight bit of compression, you're really going to notice um, it's going to create space in your hips. So allowing the tailbone and the sacrum to sink down. If you have a sandbag at home or a child, like I have children, okay, I was like, hey, come push on my, my lower back, you know, like just to include your kids in your yoga. They will appreciate it. You will too. Um, so you can, if the shoulders hurt in this position, you can bend the arms, take hands out wider if you need to, just adjust as needed. Um, walking the hands slightly over to the right. So walk both hands over to the right, gives you a nice little side stretch. Um, when she's ready, you know, she can walk back, go to the other side. So just, you know, walking hands side to side. It's really simple, nothing crazy. Um, this is going to be able, they're going to stretch along the whole side body, even down into the hips. So from the child's pose, she's going to come up into a tabletop position. So a tabletop position, um, literally making a table, right? Most of, luckily, most of the poses in yoga, they kind of you're like, oh, that's exactly what this is, you know? So you, it's easy to remember, like a tabletop position, make a table. Um, so doing some cat cows, using the breath, so the breath that we just did, the ujjayi pranayama, um, that is going to move this motion. So we're doing cat cows, opening the chest as she is going to inhale, the belly is gonna sink down to the earth, lifting the chest and articulating the spine up. As she exhales, pushing the floor away, you're going to draw the belly in, sink the hips down and really tuck the chin to the chest, the chin to the chest. Oh my goodness, people, like the best thing ever in this position. You can lean backwards, forwards, wherever you want here, and then just moving with the breath. So inhales takes you up and exhales are gonna fold you. So. In yoga, a really good thing to remember, the inhales are usually a chest opener, a heart opener, and the exhales are usually closing the belly and closing the heart. So just a little, good little tip to know that. For those of us who um, have the mobility and, and the ability to push into a down dog, from here you can keep the hands where they are, tuck the toes, she's going to lift her hips super high, almost like you're making an inverted V or an A shape. So taking blocks, if you can do this on a table, you can use a chair, you can use any type of elevation to put the hands on, on top of them. And then the idea is to send the weight back into the heels so that the heels are eventually touching. They may or may not touch at first. They probably won't touch at first, just you know, being real here. So just working there, working towards this, the heels sinking down. As you come into turbo dog, she's going to bend her knees and really send the belly onto or the, the belly onto the knees. So opening the armpits a lot, pushing into the fingertips. The wrists are super um, vulnerable, so pushing into those fingertips and growing out of the wrist. It's hard to hold, right? Like it's not easy. But coming back into the down dog whenever you're ready, think about that belly going um, towards the thighs and really sinking in. So showing us one more time, downward facing dog, lifting the hips high, sinking the heels low, and breathing here. So from here, she's going to step her right foot all the way up in between the hands, just coming into a forward fold. This is one of my all-time favorite positions. So bring both feet between the hands, widening the feet about this big. So two fists worth, that's about your hips distance. Um, taking the toes directly behind the heels and then bending the knees. This is so important. Bend the knees a lot, as much as you need to, if you, if you need to, to relax the low back, allow the crown of the head to sink down. As you can see, she's taking grip behind the ankles. If you want to take elbow to elbow, you can grab that and just like allow the body to hang down. So the forward fold, the whole purpose of this is to decompress the spine. So as you see, she's shifting the weight forward into the toes and then maybe wiggle the head around, nod it yes, shake it no, and then just allow the head to decompress from the spine. So it's just aiding in that decompression. Um, the slight bend in the knees, for me, I personally keep my knees bent the whole time. I have some injuries and things like that. So just play with the knee position here. Um, as she is going to take a flat back, the hands will come either to the shins maybe to the hips or even the floor if you're that flexible or to a block or something in front of you. So this is a halfway lift and she's going to draw the crown of the head forward, tailbone goes directly back and you're pulling the core up and in, flatten the back, bend the knees, exhale, fold, do forward. So just taking a couple of these, I literally do 10 of these a day. Like I do 10 in the morning just to like wake up, you know? So inhale, halfway lift, use the breath. The breath is so important here. Exhale, bend the knees and round forward. You'll notice here the hamstrings are starting to warm up and open. So inhale one more time, flat back, and hold at the top of the inhale, exhale, forward fold. So she's two different options of standing up. I personally take the flat back up because I have hip issues. The rounding of the back might feel better for you. So she's going to show you both. So forward fold, go ahead and bend the knees, and she's going to round up one vertebrae at a time. So she's starting by bending the knees, tucking the tailbone, rounding up, 
one vertebrae at a time, pulling the belly in, stacking the shoulders on top of the hips, and then arriving at the top. So that's a rounding up. You can do this as many times as you need to at home, even going reversing that. So tucking the chin, rolling everything down. So in the forward fold, there's also one more uh, way to stand up, but depending on your hips, depending on your low back, and any other injuries that you have, you might want to take this option when you're at home, just kind of practicing on your own. So in the forward fold, coming all the way back down, bending the knees slightly. So a slight bend into the knee, she's going to inhale and lead from the chest. So you're just going to take a flat back and inhale, lead with the heart, take the arms with you, and just breathe everything up to the top. So lots of options when you're at home for low back and all those things. Slowly she's going to come back down. You can even stand in mountain pose. So bring the palms to touch or you can send the hands down towards the heels. She's going to sink the heels into the earth, pull the toes up, Pretend like you have a um, block, a block between the thighs. She's going to squeeze the thighs together. They may be hip distance apart. You're just the activation of the thighs is there. Tucking the tailbone down, pulling the core in, and then broadening the chest. So you can close the eyes shut here if you want to. And you can take some um, inhales, exhales here, just kind of reconnecting to the breath. So from here, she's going to take the arms up, inhale and exhale, fold. So we're going to show you a little sunny here, just planting the hands down to the floor, sending the feet back into a plank. Depending on the person, if you want to take a chaturanga, if some of you have no idea what I just said, don't worry about it. It's a high to low push up, bringing the elbows in. If you don't want to do that at all, skip it, push back into a downward facing dog from here. So hit, lift the hips high, push back into your down dog, and sink the heels. So walking the feet, if you notice, she you walked her feet in just a bit. Everyone is a bit different here. So that plank position, ideally about, you know, for me, I have super long arms, so I walk my feet in. Um, just depends on the person coming into your down dog from your plank. So she's going to look forward. She's going to step forward the opposite foot. So stepping the left foot up to meet the hands, then the right foot. Take a halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, folding. So really listening to the breath. Inhale, she's going to rise. Either one, either flat back or rounding up, one vertebrae at a time, taking the chest all the way up to standing pose. So inhale, lifting the heart, bringing the arms with you, breathing everything up. So it's just linking the breath to the movement. We'll show you guys this one more time for your sun, eh? And then um, we'll show you a couple little hip openers that you can do at home that are super, super important. So she's going to inhale the arms up breathing everything up. Feel free to breathe in with the ujjayi. You guys can sit there and do it yourself. Exhale, forward fold. So take the hands down, plant the hands firmly to the ground, step back into the plank. Optional vinyasa, can you show us one chaturanga or maybe not? High to low push up. So high to low push up, elbows go in. Um, oh, here, I'll show her too. Ready? So we're going to So that's a little bit of, that's a little bit of movement um, for those of you wanting a little bit of movement for your home practice, just a little, you know, somewhere to start. So another thing, um, my personal favorites are hip openers. I have a lot of hip issues, as I've mentioned. So for me, hip openers are super important, especially at home, trying to just like wake up and not be stiff, right? So taking, um, go ahead and sit back down to the ground, and we're just going to, or lay down on the ground, take the knees into the chest, and start with the right foot. So the right foot's going to reach high up to the sky, the left foot's going to be planted on the earth. So reach, uh, bend the knee, yep, keep the foot planted, reach the heel high to the sky, and she's just going to turn the toes out to the side and come to a figure four stretch. So bringing... down, sorry, I'm so touchy, bringing the uh, right ankle across the left thigh, so whatever ankle you're doing, just crossing that ankle over the thigh, and then just pushing the knee away from you for a minute and bringing it back in, just letting that hip really relax. When and if you're ready, you can use a wall for this. The wall is my all-time favorite thing to do on here. So bringing the left foot up into the chest and then threading the hands through to grab the left shin or the back of the leg. So you can also use a wall. You can put the left wall and bring it right, right uh, in front of you. Otherwise, you can bring this foot in, thread this arm through, uh, and then grab somewhere on the shin or anywhere else. So this is um, our figure four stretch, super important for the hips, really feels amazing. Use the wall if you can't reach, no big deal. Um, so obviously taking each side evenly, but we'll just show you one for now. 
And then in the next one, um, butterfly pose, or some people say yin, diamond pose, depending on the practice. So just sitting up uh, whenever you're ready. You can stretch the other leg if you want to. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's really uneven, you know? So, and that's a stretch too. Hip openers are so important that um, you don't realize you're holding stress into your hips. Okay, so everyone holds stress into their hips, even if you don't know. You may be sitting there and just talking to a coworker or something, and all of a sudden, you don't even know. Like someone says, hey, take your attention to your hips. Relax into your hips. You're like, oh, I was clenching in my hips. I didn't even realize. So just kind of checking in, you know, like, what am I doing? Am I clenching my hips? Trying to relax into those things. So as she sits up, she's going to take the soles of the feet together. Taking the soles of the feet together and just allowing the knees to open. So again, taking those pillows, taking those blocks, taking anything you need to underneath of the thighs to um, be able to really relax into this pose. So she's going to sit up super tall. Go ahead and grab the ankles and think about bringing the belly um, towards the thigh or towards the feet as you uh, bend over. So depending on your back, you might want to start with tucking the chin of the chest and then taking the flat back over or you can lead with the heart and take the flat back all the way forward and then when you're ready, rounding in. So this is different for everyone. Um, for those of you who have those straps, um, like a, a resistance strap or band or something like that, you can even wrap it around the mid back here and hook it onto the ankles to kind of aid in this as well. Um, so this is just a really good one to open the hips and really um, bring the head down towards the feet as low as you can go. Um, how much time do we have? Good? Okay, awesome, good to know. All of a sudden I'm like, I'm speaking forever up here. All right, so from here, um, let's just do, well, obviously the most favorite position for everyone, right, Savasana. So coming into Savasana, so um, just taking, just laying down, literally, you can do this on your belly, on your back, or my personal favorite at home for better sleep is legs up the wall. So find some wall space at home, lay down, and I'll be your wall for a second. <laughs> so she's gonna bring her all the way up against the wall like this. Or bending the knees and taking, hi microphone, taking the knees bent is a good position to neutralize the pelvic floor. If the low back, if you're having any pain, take the knees bent and maybe even bring the knees together and you can take the feet out to the side. So kind of teeping that triangle of the legs. So um, lots of options for Savasana. As I mentioned, the legs up the wall, really important for good sleep, just reversing the, uh, the blood flow, and it's just really good to calm uh, lots of things, your nervous system, really beneficial for a lot of different things. So Savasana, I recommend staying for at least five to 10 minutes if you can. Um, when the mind starts to wander, right? Of course, we're human, the mind's gonna wander around a bunch. Just come back to that breath that we talked about at the beginning, just scanning the body with the inhales, taking inventory, like what's going on on each body part. So just scanning the shoulders, down to the hips, the feet, all the way around, even to you know the crown of the head. So thank you guys. Um, comments, questions, concerns, come and see me for feedback. And yeah, thank you, Candace. I don't know. And thank you for a beautiful demonstration. <laughs> thank you so much, Michelle. Um, and you know, if you want to practice yoga, go to Down to Earth Yoga, pick up her schedule. Um, and most importantly, if you are stressed out, let's all do it right now. Let's take a nice inhale in. So please take a moment uh, before you inhale in, we'll go ahead and exhale out, but let's ground yourself to the floor. So take your feet, find both feet on the floor, everybody. All right, really connect to the earth. Thank you. And then maybe sit up straight. Yeah, good. All right, and if you need to imagine a string pulling you up to the clouds, that's nice pulling you up a little bit longer. And close your eyes and let's just breathe in some love. So take a nice inhale in through your nose and hold it. One, two, three, and then exhale out through your mouth. One, two, three, perfect. Let's do it again and just breathe in that calmness. We'll inhale in, one, two, three, and exhale out, one, two, three. Perfect. And when you're ready, open your eyes. So Michelle, she, she, she taught you some awesome things to do. And even if you just take away the breathing, that's wonderful. The nostril breathing, uh, when you do nostril breathing, it, what it does is it connects both hemispheres to your brain. So it, it actually it helps them to communicate. So great thing to do. Uh, deep breathing. If you have anxiousness at home, you can't sleep, just start doing some slow breaths, okay? And that brings what we call coherence to your body. 
our next guest speaker is the local author. He's wrote a couple of books, really excited about it. But I want to introduce Tam Tamala. Um, she texted me last night or a couple days ago, and she is new uh, introducing something new to Stuart. So I'm all for collaborating. Come on up here and speak, please. Thank you. Can you hear me? Closer. Oh, boy. <laughs> So we have aerial yoga. All the things that you just heard about, would you like to do that? Maybe laying in a hammock? I have never done it. Has right. anybody done it? I have, uh, we have some people say, I haven't done it. So, so if you want to know what it's like, we have a wonderful crowd back here that I've guided through as well. Uh, I've been teaching aerial yoga for quite some time. We have a beautiful spa that if you walked literally across the road, right by the creek is a building that has six hammocks. And I have some flyers to give out as well that gives you some of the information so that you can go on to the site and see. At 7 p.m. on Mondays is aerial yoga. So your yoga moves with a hammock, bringing the hammock up to your hips, being able to do a downward dog, being able to invert if you would like to do so, and allowing the base of your spine all the way up into the skull. When your spine is on the ground, you're turning this way, right? We're pushing down, we're creating that Gravity pushes us, but when you have the opportunity to turn upside down, your spine has the opportunity to disengage, to lengthen, to elongate. Now can you imagine doing your Shavasana and hearing my voice as you're guided through a relaxation, breathing, and then that complete calm as you're suspended, completely cocooned in a hammock. So that's some of what we do and what I'm teaching. So I have some information about it as well, if you'll see me. And you can also go to my website. It's Empower Me Tamala, E-M-P-O-W-E-R, Me Tamala. And you can also find me on Facebook under that as well. Thank you so much. So uh, that sounds interesting to me. I'm game. So and how do I find you? Empower Me Tamala. So that, thank you. And, you know, again, if you're interested in something like this, get the card, look it up. And I'm so excited because to me, the next guest speaker is the most important part of life is love. Because without love, it doesn't mean you have to be in a relationship to me. This is just love. Love is kindness. Love is, love is patient. Love is every, love is, love is being good to yourself. So Arthur, come on up here. And um, we do have a calendar that I'll pass out. My challenge to you is uh, 21 Days of Love, um, and it's from his book. So each day you can do something that's kind to yourself and to maybe reach out to the community, and he'll talk about the ripple effect. effect. Oh, I almost did it. <laughs> I promise you I'm not going to do any yoga because that would be impossible for me. Try and start this out. This is going to be a little unusual, a little closer, but uh, bear with me a second. I'm going to see if I can plug this in. You can't hear me. Can you hear me now? Now you can. I have to be on top of the mic. I can see that. Okay. I'm going to try something, and I don't know if this is going to work real well. Hopefully it will. Nice. I have to say, everybody's saying, come on. We can work it out. We can work it out. Come on, I can't hear you. I know you can sing. Come on, you have a voice.
Anybody want to dance? You can work it out. It is very short. life is about working it out isn't it working it out but how do you work it out how do you do that with everybody so first of all is everybody here right now are you happy yes are you very happy put a big smile on your face yes I love that I'm gonna move this up a little bit hopefully that works really really well I'm using a little cheat sheet today because there's a lot to talk about and there's more to talk about than I can get to you in 20 minutes. So, first of all, I thank, thank Candy for having me here today. It's an honor to be here and I have to get very close to the mic. Okay, I, I'm going to spit on the mic. That's what I'm doing. I'm, so, the next person that comes up, be careful. Uh, so um, I hope you love the Beatles. I think that was a great song to start out because working it out is really, really important in our lives. You know, what makes us happy? The thing is, is that what I'd like you to do right now is just, can you all close your eyes for a second, all right? And what I'd like you to do is visualize your heart like a Valentine's heart. It's red, it's throbbing, it's beautiful. And this red heart is total love. It is love. See, you are made from love. You are love. You are perfect love. But what do we do with that? How do we show that love to other people? Life is about relationships. And it's not just about your significant other, right? It's about your parents. It's about your children. It's about your coworkers. It's about your boss. Right? It's about your customers, whatever that is. You, it's important to show love to everyone. And that's sometimes a hard thing to do, isn't it? Right? To really open up your heart and see what it's like for somebody else to be empathetic or even sympathetic to who they are, their causes. Many times, the only way we understand empathy, true empathy, is if something that is going on with somebody else, if it has happened to us. It's really hard. I know from all the things in my life, how many times I've been hurt in some way, whether it's a mental hurt from words or it's a physical hurt from something that makes it a lot easier to relate to somebody else at that point in time. So what we need to do is really dig deep into our, into our hearts. We need to dig deep into our soul because our soul and our heart are connected. Dig really deep and try to feel what somebody else is feeling and what they're going through you know god said that i gave you one mouth to talk but two ears to listen because listening is way more important to talking because when i listen to somebody i can learn from them i can understand what's going on i can get from them things that i may need to know you now everything in life happens for a reason whether you believe it or not I was just talking with Flavio, and I'm not going to share the whole story about, about what happened for him and why he was here and where he is now, but the reality is, is that every time something happens in your life, you may call it hell, but maybe it's a gift. Maybe it's really heaven because it's taking you somewhere else. It's taking to you to another place. It's allowing you to see differently. You know, if we didn't have night, right, we didn't have darkness, we wouldn't know what light is. If we didn't have sour, we wouldn't know what sweet is. I mean, there's opposites of everything. If you don't experience one, you can't know what the other one is. There is a saying by Lao Tse. He's a 600 BC Chinese philosopher. 
And I want you to take these words in very, very deeply. Please really concentrate on these words. Maybe even close your eyes as I say them because they are so important. It goes this way. It is watch your words. I'm sorry, watch your thoughts because they become your words. Watch your words because they become your actions. Watch your actions because your actions become your habits. Watch your habits because they become your character. And watch your character because it will become your destiny. So if you really, really understand how those words, everything that you say affects someone else, you know words, words are more hurtful than any physical damage you can do to someone. Words cut deeper than a knife and they will last for a lifetime. So this is where we start to come from real love. This is where love, the inner you, to reach deep into your soul, reach deep into your heart before you react to anything. Because reaction is very easy, isn't it? I mean, we, when we started out as a child, we learned things from our parents, good, bad, and different. And then we learn from our peers, our friends. We learn from our school, we learn from our teachers, we learn from the news, we learn from the area that we grew up in because every area is a little bit different even though most people are the same. And we learn all these things and what we have on our bodies, what you have on your body, are lots of little buttons. And those buttons can get pushed so easily, can't they? Something that hurt you as a child, all of a sudden, 30 or 40 years later, somebody says something similar to that hurt, and you react, and you go, and you're ready to reach out and tear them apart, or you say something nasty in return. This is your opportunity. This is my opportunity to be different, to act differently, to be the change you wish to see in the world to be the change you wish to see in your own life. You see, change is happening all the time. It's either with your permission or without your permission, change is always happening. So would you like to be in control of that change? It makes sense, doesn't it? Because you have control of your life. You have 100% control. You are also 100% responsible for your life. You know, in relationships, it's so, always so interesting to me. I've often heard people say, oh, I spent 10 years with this guy or this woman, and what a waste of time. It just totally, just what was I doing for 10 years? It was all bullshit. Well, it wasn't. If you take a look at that relationship, there's something in that relationship that helped you grow, that helped you understand and see what you didn't want as much as what you want from somebody else. Every job that you've had, everything that you've done, every interaction with somebody has taught you something if you want to learn it, if you want to see it. It's always up to us. In relationships, they say relationships are 50-50. Really? Well, if I don't put 100% into that relationship and I only put 50% in, what will I expect from that relationship? I can't expect that much, can I? I am 100% responsible for everything that happens in my life. Every single thing, whether you like it or not, I am responsible. I allowed it to happen or I was part of it in some way. Why I've written about love is because it is the ultimate answer to everything. When you give love to somebody, when you share love, when you do loving things, you have to get that in return. You can't expect to slap somebody and get love back. Or could you? Because that's what I'm asking you to do, and that's what I expect of myself. Yes, we will be hurt by somebody. 
But do you want to return the hurt or do you want to be the peacemaker? It's a lot to take in. I've been working on this for decades. And I started out with conversations, no, I'm sorry, I started out with not conversations with God. I will think of it later, but anyway, I started out around Course in Miracles, thank you very much. Started out with Course in Miracles. Boy, was that a tough book. If, you've, if you know what Course in Miracles is about, you'll look at that and you'll go, this is a Bible unto itself. How do I get through this? How do I not only understand it, how do I do it? And then conversations with God, God comes along and study of Buddhism and Christianity and Kabbalah. And Kabbalah was my first really experience of total love and understanding about life. Now, many of you may think that Kabbalah is a religion. It's not, it's really science, although it's been, it's been written through rabbis. It's been written through the Jewish community more than anything else, but it's really a science. And it's a science of how to live in life with kindness and gentleness. I was at a time in my life when I had absolutely nothing. I had, my wife divorced me the year before I lost my business. I lost my business, I lost my house. I had nothing to do. I was desperate. And I can tell you a lot of stories about desperation because I've been there a few times, unfortunately. But the growth that happens through those situations are absolutely amazing. And that, in studying Kabbalah, I called one of the Kabbalah centers and uh, I was almost on my knees. I got, I really would like to have the volumes of the Zohar to read that because I wanted to study more, I wanted to go deeper. And do you know that 30 days later, all 23 volumes wound up on my doorstep for free? And so that has to tell you something. I know it told me something about going out there and asking the universe for what you need. And all of it again comes through love. And studying that, I wrote my first book, which was called Quantum Shift into Greatness. And I wrote that because I wanted to understand and I want others to understand that science and spirituality are really on the same page. That the Big Bang Theory, when you look at it from a scientific perspective and you look at it from a spiritual perspective, is saying the same thing. And I always say this, I always go into whether you believe in God or not, whether you believe in a supreme being or a higher, whatever that may be, I guarantee you that it's out there because we are all energy. The whole world is made up of energy. We're all made of atoms. Everything is made of atoms. So the chair that you're sitting on right now is made of atoms and the air that you're breathing is made of atoms and the sky is made of atoms and the bricks are made of atoms and you're made of atoms, just all vibrating at a different frequency. And that frequency really connects to everything. You see, I don't have to touch you to be part of you because the atoms in the air between me and you are connected. We are connected with loving energy all the time. So will we use that loving energy to do good things in the world and do good things in your life? As I said earlier, we, you, I must take 100% responsibility for what we want to see in this world and what we want to see in our own lives. We want peace in this world. You have to be part of it and you have to start it. If you want love in this world, you have to be it and do it and be part of it. 
I want you to envision something else right now, okay? So, again, if you'll close your eyes, because it's easier to envision this when you close your eyes. So you are with one other person right now in a circle. And the both of you come together in community and in love and care. Now, the two of you, the next day, meet two other people in their circle, and now you become one circle of four in love and in community. And the following day, the four of you meet four more people in another circle, and the four of you, or the eight of you now, come in community with each other. So from eight, we grow to 16, to 32, to 64, to 128, to 256, to 512, to 1024, to 2048, and on and on and on. Do you know that if each of these circles each day came in community with someone else, at the end of 28 days, you would have reached everyone in the United States. At the end of 31 days, you would have reached everyone in the world. So when somebody might say to you, peace is not possible, I say it is possible. It is absolutely possible if we all do it. Don't rely on somebody else. Don't rely on your neighbor. Don't say to your neighbor, go pick up that piece of paper because I don't, I'm too lazy to do it. Pick it up. Don't say to your neighbor, you need to be loving and not be loving yourself. Develop the habits in life that bring you to a place of total responsibility and love and care and empathy and sympathy and tolerance and patience. I don't have it all the time. I know none of us do, but it's the practice of it. It's the recognition of that. It's to know that you can do it if you choose to, to rise above the noise, right? To rise above the din, as they say. So in this book, we have 21 days of things that you can do every day to make your life better and to make the life of everyone else in the world better. 21 days, practice tolerance one day. Practice patience another day. Practice, no, I'm back to tolerance. Tolerance and patience must be a big one. All right, practice forgiveness. Practice gratitude. How can you love someone else if you don't even love yourself? Look in the mirror, see who you are, because the reflection in the mirror is a reflection, the same reflection that you're getting from everybody else. I am you, you are me, we are each other. You see, beneath this meat suit that I wear, the meat beneath the meat suit that you wear, we are all exactly the same. There is no difference between us, I guarantee you. Unless you're an alien, I'm not sure about that, I don't know all of you. But truly, we have lungs, we have all these organs, we have muscle, we have bone, we have connective tissue. Is there anybody here that isn't built that way? Let me know so I can identify you and call the cops. <laughs> but it is true, we are all, we're 100% the same, folks. We have to stop looking out at each other and judging each other by how they look or how you look or how he or she looks. Yes, we have an outer covering that defines us in some way to make us look a little bit differently. But inside beats that red, vibrating, valentine heart full of love that we all need to think about and share. So I'll leave you with this. It looks like my time is up. I can say unequivocally that I love all of you. And I hope that you will go out today or just maybe just get up and hug somebody right now and just love the world, be in love. And so we have a calendar here for everybody. It's a free calendar. The calendar has 21 days 
of love in it for every, something that you can do every day. Practice it because in your practice of 21 days, what my hope is, is that you will carry that forward every day after that, not just for 21 days. And I have my books over here if you want my book, 21 Days to Love, it's $10. Again, better than 15 bucks on Amazon. Thank you so much. Awesome. I always say that love is the answer. So Arthur, thank you so much. And today's day is uh, January 5th. It's gratitude day on the calendar. So gratitude, be grateful. Tomorrow's is patience. If you can find maybe patience of you know, getting up and going back to work, my Martin County High School teachers uh, and staff. So, and um, but I want to do a five-minute break so you can, you can get warm. Maybe walk around. Maybe you want to buy his book. And then we have um, Andrea Pearson. She's going to do a meditation. Uh, she's going to talk about. She's starting a meditation studio in Stewart. So she's going to talk about if you're interested in meditation. She's going to help, and she's going to do so many different things there too. It's going to be awesome. And then we have the essential oil presentation, and then we'll close. So we only have just a few more presentations today. If you want to warm up, I know it is chilly. They asked for a bathroom break. Bathrooms are over here, and uh, I'm so thankful today is gratitude day. So I'm expressing that. So go ahead. We're going to put some music on. Five minute break though. So. Four minutes, three minutes. <laughs> Twenty one days to love. Our author Tassinello. Come All right, guys. Uh, so we're going to begin our next presentation. Um, and I just want to thank everybody again for coming. And my goal is that you walk away with maybe one bit of information to better yourself. Um, and I love the calendar for love. That's just the best thing we can do. So thank you so much. So I'm going to introduce Andrea. <laughs> and I, if you if you know me well, I you know always mess up names. So it's Andrea. I think I was calling her Andrea. Anyway, here you go. Thank you. So I just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Andrea Pearson, and I met Candy a while back, and we just hit it off, and we decided we're going to be collaborating a lot in the future. And she invited me to um, come to this event today. I am in the process of opening up a meditation center, literally right down the block from here. It's uh, Tranquility Haven Center on the corner of Six and Dixie, and you will be seeing a lot of candy there as well. And today she invited us to lead you guys in a meditation. So I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to introduce one of my instructors, Brittany. This is Brittany Kano, and she's going to lead us in a meditation today. So I hope you guys get much value from it. Thank you. Hello, hello. Can you guys hear me okay? It's good? Okay. Now hopefully the mic doesn't fall and I can keep it up. Maybe I'll just squat like this. All right. So. I was introduced to meditation about seven years ago and had no idea what meditation was. So maybe you're like, really, I've heard the term, but I'm not sure what it is. Don't worry, you can't mess it up. Couple things is I will ask you to close your eyes. You do not have to. You can bring them down low. You can keep them open. Do what feels right and authentic for you. And again, this is a time to really shine love and light into yourself, into the world goes perfect with what Arthur shared with us today about love. We're going to be doing a guided meditation, a law of attraction meditation. It's a perfect time with us entering into a new decade, a brand new year. So I'm going to ask you now to close your eyes. You may hear me say frequently, tune into your breath. It's an opportunity to just bring awareness back to the present moment. And anytime throughout the day, it's great to notice your breath and you may look up here and notice I have my eyes closed as well so go ahead if you're comfortable doing so go ahead and close your eyes and take a nice inhale in through your nose and exhale out through your mouth we're gonna do that a few more times inhaling through your nose exhaling through the mouth 
seeing if you can just soften a little bit with each breath, breathing in, breathing out, and another inhale, and another exhale. Go ahead and notice where you make contact with your seat. Notice how it feels to be rooted, to be grounded, to be supported by whatever it is that you're sitting on or maybe you're standing, noticing your feet as well in this moment. Noticing the earth beneath you. And there's absolutely nothing that you need to do to be supported. It just is. Take a nice slow breath in through your nose. And exhale through your mouth. And if you have any tension or anything in your shoulders, maybe roll those shoulders back and forth, relaxing. Allowing the crown of your head to relax, your brow line to soften, bringing awareness to your face. If you notice you're tense anywhere, see if you can just soften that ever so lightly. This is an opportunity to be kind, to be loving towards yourself. And notice if you have any tension or anything in your body, to simply be aware, trying not to judge. It's neither bad nor good, it just is. Oftentimes we're quick to judge things as good, as bad, as wrong, as right. And right here, right now, allow yourself to be. And relax the back of your head, the back of your shoulders, into your arms down into your wrist, into your fingers, into your hands. Allowing your entire spine, your chest, everything to just soften as though a blanket of peace is washing over you. You may choose at this time to place your hands on your heart. Just simply bring awareness to the center of your chest and to your heart as though to open to receive love, to receive light. Allowing your hips to relax, your legs to just simply melt away, your knees, your lower legs, your ankles, becoming fully aware of your body. And we are about to go on to a journey. You may choose to call on this journey your higher power, whether that's God, Jesus, Allah, the universe, or simply anything, anyone that brings you love, that brings you light, that brings you comfort and safety. Find yourself in a place that you enjoy and that you feel inspired. This could be a place that you've been before. This could be a place that you go to in your dreams. And remember, there's no wrong or right place. Just go with whatever shows up for you. Maybe this is a place that you've not yet been, but simply Imagine this place in your mind's eye, if that's possible for you. But you're being comforted right now and open to receive. All around you are the people that you love most. And you're reviewing your relationships and you're seeing your relationships the way that you truly desire for them to be. An opportunity for you to connect with your heart's desires. 
And as you look into their eyes, you see warmth, kindness, happiness. And as they look into your eyes, they see the same. And as you scan this space for those relationships that mean so much to you, you have a sense of gratitude wash over. And you see them just the way you've always wanted them to be. And now take some time to reflect on your career. This could be your job, your education, what you consider your purpose. What are you doing? And how do you feel doing it? What kind of impact are you making? And with who? Just take some time here to envision what that looks like for you, how that is. And now call to mind your health, your well being. What kind of things are you doing when you're healthy, when you're strong? Perhaps you notice you feel confident. You feel intentional. Take this moment to extend love, inspiration, onto your health. Next, I want you to see your finances, abundance and prosperity. Anything really is possible in this area. Money is energy. And in this moment, you have all of the energy that your heart desires. And allow that to bless your finances. Perhaps you see your bank account. You see it for the way that you want it to be. And the things that this financial freedom allows you to do. What are the things that you will do with all of this abundance, all of this prosperity? And call to mind your impact. You might call this your sense of community, your contribution bringing to mind how you want to make a difference in the world, the legacy you will leave behind. This could be within your small circle of friends and family. This could be an everyday action. You'll be kind to a stranger, smile at a stranger. Maybe there's another way that you want to make an impact. Allow time for that to really resonate. Those desires that are placed in our heart are placed there for a reason. And it's possible. And now bring into awareness how you want to feel on a daily basis. When you wake up in the morning, 
when you get out of bed, maybe even before you get out of bed. How do you want that experience to be? And as you go through your day, who do you spend your time with and how? And before you lay your head on the pillow each night to fall off to sleep, what is that feeling that you would just love to experience on a regular basis? Take a few moments to take in all of the beauty that maybe just came across for you. Allowing the feelings of gratitude to wash over you. Perhaps there's a question that you've had. This would be the perfect time to ask. Now imagine a bright, luminescent light washing over you as though it's your safety, your armor, to continue to go out into the world and share that love and light that is within you. And bringing awareness back into this moment, noticing your feet on the floor, the chair behind the back of your legs, noticing how you sit upright, again tuning back into your breath, bringing awareness to your forearms, to your fingers, to your neck. to your face, to the crown of the head. Perhaps you turn the edges of your lips up for a smile, giving thanks and gratitude for the opportunity to be alive, to be here on this beautiful day. For all your blessings, the good times, as we call them, and the bad, because even in those hard times, we receive many blessings. And I'm gonna ask you to join me in a series of three more breaths. And we're gonna inhale for a count of eight, hold the breath for a count of eight, and then exhale for a count of eight. So go ahead and breathe in through your nose for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and hold for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and exhale for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And we're going to do that two more times at your own pace, breathing in for a count of eight. Holding for a count of eight and exhaling for a count of eight. And whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes if you have them closed. If there was anything that came to you that was of inspiration, I would suggest that you share it with someone. There's so much power in sharing whatever experience it is that you just had. And if you didn't see anything, don't worry. Like I said, you can't meditate wrong. 
I want to thank you for participating. Thank you for being part of this beautiful experience here. And Happy New Year. Thanks, Brittany. That was awesome. Um, so if you're interested in learning meditation, Andrea is right over here. Where are you? She can sit right there. Um, definitely, you know, get with her or find her on Facebook. Her last name's Pearson. And, um, you know, it starts by beginning. I also, we have our one of our last presentations coming up. I'm so excited. Essential oils. I know you guys are trying to keep warm before the sun goes down. Um, I, I thought these were really cute. So Palm City Elementary, Martha Psalm. I worked in the school system for 21 years. I just recently resigned. Um, so I have a lot of contacts. But Martha Psalm uh, participated in this. Uh, she's the art teacher there. And so uh, there, it was to inspire, like, what are you going to do in 2020? Because I always think it's important to set an intention. And so this one says, uh, better singer. Um, she wants to get the lead in a musical. And you can see the microphone here. I just think that's like, I love kids stuff. Um, I love when kids are inspired. So tapping into your authentic self, it's never too late. And then uh, this one is really <laughs> super cute. Um, my goal is to draw more pictures. And then he wrote, I'm an artist. So super cute uh and uh you know if you're an artist or if you like to play an instrument it is never too late no matter what age you are tap in do it try embrace the fear and i'm going to bring in um keter and kawa uh up and colleen they're going to present on essential oils so i've never really i i actually get uh, allergic reactions from lotion sometime um and uh, maybe you get rashes sometimes and you don't know why, but I think it's the toxins I put on my skin. And so uh, she, she's rolling her eyes <laughs> like no brainer candy. Yeah, that's definitely it. Um, so she's going to present on essential oils. So if you can, if you want to come a little closer, uh, let's, you know, bring in the crowd, maybe the heat, we can come a little closer. And then this is the last presentation. And then you're going to be, I'll talk a little bit and you can go, but come, let's pull up our chair a little closer and get a little closer to, so that we have a nice community uh, before you go. If you and it, this is a really important workshop to stay for, so you're welcome. So come on closer if you can. If you can move up, there's a couple of chairs. Grab the bench. Now, hello yeah. everyone. Um, my name is Colleen Doherty. And while Keller is grabbing her foot, thanks. Um, I'm going to put my, my Calm roller on. It's a, it's a Young Living Calm CBD roller with uh, Young Living Essential Oils. What do you got there, Keller? Um, I'm going to be applying some stress away because, yes, that's that's a leg of day. I'm, a, I'm also, we're moms and we're also teachers. So we live by stress away. Um, this is a great blend that really is very effective. Uh, another thing I'm going to help, because I'm not used to talking in front of adults, I'm used to talking in front of 11th graders, which are, look like adults, but they're not, um, is Valor, which they is, are. they really think they are. Um, but Valor is an amazing oil that really just, I call it uh, my, I got this oil. You know, it's that, we should have had it up here for all the speakers. I know, I would say that. But yes, I'm Keller and Kawa, and this is Colleen, and we're just two moms who use essential oils because like the whole, you know, everything today has been, oh, there we go. Hello. I also don't use microphones daily. We have to project the teacher voices. But, um, but um, we just, we, you know, we believe in being mindful about what comes into our homes. We feel like we are the gatekeepers of our homes. And just like we've talked about sugar and food and love and positive energy and meditation and all those things, we also need to be aware of products that come into our home everything from cleaning to laundry to your dish soap to the lotions and products you put on your body so we really believe in being gatekeepers of our own homes and being aware of what comes into your home and you really you can control that you know um candy talked a little bit about the greenwashing that happens where oh this is a good product this is safe it's organic it's good 
you have to be aware and not every, just because it says it is, doesn't mean it is, you know? So we have to be aware and, and, and have that knowledge. And then our job is to tell you, give you information and then you do what you will with it. So we're not here selling products. We're not here, you can't buy a bottle of lavender from us. You know, that, that's not how this works. This is about us giving information, helping you make a better choice for your family. When you know better, you do better for your family. Um, and that's what we believe in and what we're here to share with you today. Just piggyback. So this for me was my big takeaway for a little over four years ago when I started my non-toxic journey. And we usually like have PowerPoints and things with our classes. But so this visual 26 seconds was what stuck with me. And, and that's what was the driving force for me to make the changes or a part of the changes for our family and our home. So whatever you're putting on your body, it only takes 26 seconds to be found in your bloodstream. So just as we were connecting, you know, all the things we've done here today, um, you know, I just is just as important as what we are putting on our bodies, the cleaning products, all of that. We do have a giveaway. So we have a little information um, sheet that you can fill out at the table. And we're gonna demo um, a cleaner. So like this product right here that Kellerin has in her hands can make a huge impact. Um, I think someone's here said today, if there's only just one thing that you can walk away, like one change that you can make, like this for us, was huge. So if you're not aware of this, the EPA um, says that our the indoor of our home is three to five percent more polluted than the outdoor. And we think, okay, well, inside our home should be a safe place for our family, but it's not anymore because we have so many fragrance, synthetic-based fragrant things in our home with our cleaning products, our personal care products, all of that. Um, that just one single product like this cleaning concentrate do you want let's, let's just make this right now so we can we're talking about this now so this is all plant-based it has essential oils thieves oh calorin you gotta tell the story of thieves That's, she's our history oh, teacher Perfect. Okay, so, so give away, but we're opening it, so it will be open for the first time. But two. that's because we're going to demo how you use this product. So this is the Thieves Cleaner. Again, this is essential oil based, and we and she just talked about the, you know, it, it's all about switching from chemical synthetic products to plant based. Um, Thieves is a blend of essential oils unique to Young Living. We'll go into why we choose Young Living because we see a lot of essential oils out there on the on the market today. Um, but we put a cap full of this into uh, this glass bottle, and we're going to add distilled water, and that is your everything cleaner. Husbands can make this. Everybody. Husbands kids, can make kids, it. Kids, everybody. it's safe. My my one and a half year old today was spraying it around the house as I cleaned up. Um, I mean, it's super safe. It's safe for pets. But Thieves is a blend of essential oils that actually dates back to the time of the bubonic plague during med medieval times, where thieves were actually using this blend of essential oils. It's everything from lemon, clove, cinnamon bark, um, to not contract plague. And they were caught and actually asked, like, why are you not getting sick? How is this happening? And they said, well, this is the blend of oil we're using and, and the more lenient sentence. So this is a true historical story. Um, so these this, this blend is incredible for cleaning. Um, also, it's something when I, my kids come home from school and there's kind of a funk, you know, or we're teachers, we come home, we're like, feel something happening. Start diffusing the thieves in the house. Clean with the thieves. Make a thieves tea. Um, thieves is an incredible incredible um, blend so I highly encourage you to come smell it and you know try it um, so I just said thieves tea you might be thinking wait a minute you you're making a tea yes like that's the thing about young living and, and this is why we choose young living versus some of the other companies you hear about you know you can buy essential oils anywhere you want you can go to bed bath and beyond target you can buy dollar 99 peppermint essential oil and on the label it'll say a hundred percent pure peppermint essential oil but then you flip it over and the label says do not ingest highly flammable call a doctor you know it's like wait a minute if it's peppermint and there's expiration dates yeah if there's if it's peppermint i should be able to go to a peppermint plant pick peppermint off a leaf and eat it and have no problem so if it's 100 percent essential oil shouldn't i be able to do that with a bottle of peppermint not all essential oils are made equally um the fda only requires that five percent of an oil be essential oil to label it 100 percent essential oil so that's that greenwashing so only five percent of an oil has to be essential oil in order for the FDA to allow it to be marketed as 100%. So that bottle of $1.99 one spot target peppermint oil 
is all sorts of synthetic chemicals and, and nonsense and stuff that yeah you can't ingest it's not safe young living has a seed to seal That's promise yeah in your bloodstream all those chemicals that we thought we were making a safe healthy choice with yeah, so since it only takes the 26 seconds, when you apply that to your skin, the peppermint, which I know Colleen uses regularly, we use regularly, when it's hot out, <laughs> we'd be offering peppermint oil to the back of your necks because it really cools you down. But um, but the peppermint, you know, just oils in general, um, since it's only 5%, that's really scary. You know, it's really scary. You think about all the things and all the chemicals, and Candy shared with us all the chemicals that are in food we eat, and we need to be mindful about what we put on our body, what we diffuse in our homes you know you think about candles and scents and fragrance i mean think about all the fragrances and that we put in our homes in our bodies laundry candles cleaners um air wicks scentsies all these all these things that are you know there's i'm sorry but in nature there's nothing that smells like a birthday cake candle that's not that's not real like you know, yeah, you can get some, you know, stress away is pretty close, actually. It's a nice a vanilla thing. But, like, you have to think about it. When you get these, like, scents that are supposed to smell like a cucumber birthday candle mango smoothie, it's like, well, what's in it, really? Like, what is, well, it's all this crazy stuff. Like Katie said, you, you need to be aware and educate yourself. But they don't have to tell us what's in fragrance. And that's the thing is if fragrance, they, they it can be their trade secret. And the FDA allows them to just put on their bottle fragrance. And it doesn't have to actually say what's in that. A lot of times it involves formaldehyde and a lot of other harmful chemicals that you don't want to be putting on your skin, let alone ingesting. So that's why Young Living's unique is that seed to seal promise. They control the ground the, the plants are grown in, the farms, everything to the bottle. And then they have third party testing. Colleen's even been to the farm. So you want to tell me? Yeah, so we are, we're going back again um, this summer. My husband and I, um, we go to the conference every year. And one of the farms, they have farms all over the world. They have partner farms. Um, but you literally get to plant the plants while you're there. You get to pick the weeds while you're there. You can go behind any door while you're there. It's just an open door policy to all of their farms. So, and uh, I have a little pamphlet. We've got it in a stand over there. But this is, I wish I had this tool when I was doing my research many years ago when I came to Young Living for my family. But this has a, a 11 of the most common um, essential oil companies that you'll see around and about in Amazon and health food stores and all of that. Um, and it gives you a side by side comparison. And then you can just, just read, just do the, the research for yourself. And well, they've done the research for you, but you know, just read the difference between the companies. Um, because it's, it's just very apparent, the difference. And like she said, there there's no other guarantee. They, they guarantee it from the whole entire process, from the seeds all the way to the seal. And that's why we're not, we don't sell anything. We're not selling you a bottle of anything. We don't have anything for you to purchase and take away from us. Um, and at, on the same note, we can't possibly educate you. Like, so the starter kit, which is how we both got started on our journey, um, it comes with 12 of the everyday, most common essential oils. And we have them in little, smelly jars on the table and little snapshots you can get little um, information about how you could use each one of them in your family but we can never possibly tell you all the ways that we use them and it's a, it's a journey it's a process so we didn't start out by changing everything we didn't throw away everything under all of our cabinets we just empowered ourselves and we decided that we're going to be the gatekeepers we're going to learn how to read ingredients and we're going to make changes in our homes and every single change we make makes a huge impact in your life and you don't realize it now because that's called body burden something that we teach about in classes but think about americans how many americans complain about being fatigued um, having headaches and migraines and things like adhd and cancer cancer did you know that this is from american cancer society only five to ten percent of cancer is genetics the rest of it's environmental so we can't control all the environmental, but we can control what we're buying. We can control what we're purchasing. And I used to buy from, hi Michael, Michael Rollins. Um, I used to buy from Amazon and Target and all of those places. And I thought that it was totally safe for my family. I had no idea that what I was buying was creating all of this hormonal and all different havoc on our bodies that you don't see till later down the road and you don't realize it. You know, all these different things that it just, your body can only take so much. You can only, you know, you can only release so many toxins. And I don't know if you've got to mention this, but like the average woman in the course of a day, we put 300 chemicals on our body. Remember, on our body is in our body. And 80 of that is before we even leave the house, before breakfast. That's how many chemicals we're putting on our bodies. 
And that's everything from that hand soap to all the personal care products and the cleaning, all that stuff, the candles, the deodorant, all of that stuff. So we have to be the gatekeeper. So we can't possibly teach you everything about all of the oils and how we use them, but one little thing at a time, we used up in our homes, and then we're like, okay, deodorant. I got rid of my Dove, I got rid of my, you know, whatever. How can I make a better change? Is it always Young Living? No. Do they offer it all? Yes, they do. Um, you don't have to worry. All those ingredients are always all safe. We know that guaranteed they have that seed to seal promise. But if you can just pick one thing at a time and make changes, that's going to make a huge impact on your family. Maybe that's using dryer balls to scent your laundry instead of dryer sheets and fabric softener. Google that. Look it up. Dangers of dryer sheets. Dangers of fabric softener. So maybe that's your one change. Maybe your one change is like the thieves cleaner that you might win today. Maybe it's just using a diffuser instead of candles. But remember that you have to be really aware of the difference in quality of the essential oils because what you think you're diffusing instead of that candle could actually be worse than the candle. So just something to be aware of and empower yourself. So we do have events. Um, and we have one on the um, at Bunkhouse Coffee Shop on the 31st at 6 p.m. So it'll be a, a, an intro class and we'll have stations. Everybody can make items, have coffee, all of that. Um, but stop by the table. Um, we like we have make and takes all year long. We have summer make and takes, back to school make and takes. We have February Lucy Libido make and takes. Yes, there is an oil for that. Um, cleaning make and takes. Um, just, you know, just general wellness events, fall make and takes. Like we do, we do usually one to two events a month. And our purpose is to empower you, you know, because um, we were in this position as parents and didn't know better because we didn't know. And now we do. And when we know better, we do better and we want to share. And that's what this whole event was about. So we're really excited about it. We're excited to be here today. Um, that's probably all we can. Oh, oh, we do have, um, I have maybe like eight or 10 of these left, but like I said, we can't do a whole class for you now, but there is a CD in here. I know CDs are kind of dated now at this point, but there are there is a CD in here. I think it's about a 44 minute um, class that goes through the whole thing. It's not done by us. It's really professional, amazing. Um, but when you're doing laundry, when you're driving in the car, if your car is a CD player, um, you know, doing those household things that we need to do, you can listen and just empower yourself so you can start making changes. Um, we'll be back at the table before everybody's getting ready to clean up if you have any questions. Um, if you want to look through the guide and see, it, are you using a certain brand that you want to know more about and see how it compares, um, et cetera. But we're just happy to share our experiences with you. Like she said, we're just moms and teachers, and we're just trying to share what we know. Thanks. <laughs> We do encourage you to come up and smell things and ask questions and for sure fill out a sheet to get in, in line for the drawing that we're going to do later. Um, and so we can get information about, you know, our invites to events. The events are really, really great times of just fellowship and it's a lot of young people. It's a lot of people from all ages, really, and all backgrounds. And it's a lot of um, just being aware of what's going on in your in your home. And um, so thank you. Thank you, Candy. We will do the drawing in, let's say, five minutes. So if you want to come up and fill something out, come on up. That'd be great. All right. So thank you so much. Again, you know, it's all about empowering yourself. I love how you, you know, she said you're the gatekeeper. But I'm going to do the drawing. So if you bought the 50-50 ticket and you want to take out your tickets now to see who's going to win the money. Now, Tina, Tina, how much money are they winning? She's got to count it. <laughs> so while she's counting it, I'm going to have Al put on a little bit of music, maybe, or I'll just... Bye. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. I guess I could talk a little bit about the next event for the Healing House is a yoga retreat at Kashi. It's on April 18th, um, and it's also April 18th to the 19th. So it's an overnight where you can stay, or you can just go for one day. So... Yeah, uh, Kashi Ashram, which if you haven't been to the ashram, it's an amazing place. So, I know my Aunt Jane is gone. Yeah, it's, it's a really great retreat. You eat organic, healthy, vegan food, which is it's kind of a way to cleanse yourself, cleanse your mind. There's going to be a silent time where you can really kind of really get in touch with yourself. So, it's awesome. She's still counting. 30? All right. <laughs>
15. <laughs> all right, all right, 15, and you're going to get $15, the lucky winner. So, <laughs> hey, 15 is better than none, right? <laughs> Kayla, you want to come up and pick one out for me so it doesn't look like I'm shake it up? Woo, lady, woo. Okay, here we go, Kayla. She's not here. So, Deb Banta. Her name's on it. They should be present to one, right? Deborah Miller? Is Deborah Miller here? No. I think you have to be present to win, don't you? What? Yeah, exactly. I think you need to be present to win. Jane! Jane! Yes! <laughs> you are the winner. Congratulations. I know my friend Denise is ready to go probably. Denise, are you packing up? So thank you so much for coming. And um, I just want to let Ketterin, um, Ms. Caldwell, do you want to come up and do the giveaway? Okay. So we're going to do the drawing and then we're going to call it a night. We're going to call it a day. Thank you again for everybody who is here and everybody who attended. Awesome stuff. All right, so the winner of the Thieves Cleaner that's going to last you like a year. That is a blank one. That is, that is exciting. It's like being at school already. Whose paper is this? No name. All right. My life's about to begin tomorrow. The winner is Rita. Not I don't think this is Rita Sosa though. I don't think this is that Rita. Inactive. It might be massage yoga. I don't know. I don't know. But I got a phone number. So her name's Rita, and I will call her, and that's the winner. Little anti climactic, but it's okay. Yay! <laughs> All but we do have a lot of things up here, and if you have something you want to try, if you want to try this dress away, or um, we'll give you a drop to rub in your hands. You know, I, we talked a lot about medic, uh, meditation and stuff today. A lot of these oils can be used for that and stuff like that. I wish there was a warming oil, because you look like you need it. <laughs> I guess if I was a good mom, I'd grow my dick. <laughs> anyway, all right, well, thank you everyone for coming. Thank you for the people who presented, and I hope everybody goes home and you take a moment to breathe just breathe okay thanks so much have a great night and so it is